Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, December 14th at 2 o'clock. We are in the City Hall second floor media room, and this is the monthly meeting of the Public Art Committee. Megan, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Toth. Here. Ms. Christopoulos. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Ms. Arpitello. Here. Ms. Wood. Here. Chair Jennings. Here. Um, uh, Member Robert Stackhouse is excused for medical reasons, and um, I'd like to introduce our new member, Dawn Arbitello. Dawn, if you would just tell us a few quick things about yourself. Sure. I have lived in Tarpon Springs for a little over 11 years now. Um, I live here with my husband and my two dogs. Mm -hmm. I'm a graphic designer slash creative services manager by trade. Um, I'm also a uh, digital marketing consultant and recently a publisher of a children's book, or not publisher, illustrator. Um, and I'm really excited to join the team. Yes, well, welcome to our merry band. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess you uh, you know the procedures and everything, and you've been sworn in. And yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have no guests today, and um, I assume that everybody's had a chance to read the uh, minutes from the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, Dawn, since we have two vacancies, uh, you'll be able to vote today. Usually. Oh, excellent. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're really getting a baptism by fire. <laughs> okay. Does anybody um, have any uh, motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Second? I'll do it. Okay. Any discussion, corrections, comments? All in favor of accepting, of approving the minutes as submitted, say aye. 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 Okay, we go to old business, uh, current project updates. Uh, I just quickly want to, I didn't see it, it's on here, but uh, we do have an attachment um, for the Elizabeth Indianos uh, film um, that accompanies her mural in the Cultural, Cent Cultural Heritage Center. Uh, so if you just want to take a quick look at that. Um, and uh, the Black Heritage Project, uh, Steve Oliver said that he was going to make a presentation. He's not here yet, so we'll just move him back in the agenda to whenever he does appear. Okay, uh, Illuminated Art Boxes, Graham. Um, the catalog has been um, prepared and is um, published on the website at Tarpon Springs Public Art. There he is. Um, we're... The check requests have been submitted. We're waiting for the city to process them and mm -hmm. issue the checks. The, um, um, the actual skins, or whatever you call them, have been submitted to the Public Works Department, and we're waiting for them mm -hmm. to be installed. And so everything is moving along, and we're just in waiting for the, um, the final couple of pieces so that we can put it to bed until next July. Okay. Diana, I was down at the docks on uh, Monday an night, and they're not lit up. Is I there... have an update. Oh, good. good. Um, uh, yeah. Um, they were starting to be installed yesterday. They're being completed today. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that could have been the issue is that they were installing them, but they didn't get a chance to hook everything up. So, okay. Um, they said that it should be completed today. Excellent. And um, I did send the press release out today for um, the announcement of the, the new artwork. So Beautiful. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, we have our artist, Stephen Oliver, with us today. So, Stephen, if you would like to give us a update on the Black Heritage Project. I know you've got a lot going on with it. Yeah, there is a lot going on. I'll try to be brief. Okay. You already warned me about my verbosity. <laughs> <laughs> I sympathize. I'm as bad as you are, not worse. <laughs> well, when you're into interesting subjects, you know, it's, it's easy to talk a lot. Um, okay, so there's a lot, uh, lot been going on. Um, we had a site meeting with um, some folks from Public Works. Um, Joanne and Diane were both there. It was incredibly productive. Um, thanks again, Joan, for being there because... Welcome. I had no clue as to what the potential move thoughts are the, on that first site, and it would have been impossible to really pin it down. Mm -hmm. I think we did come up with ultimately a better site after going through about five permutations. Um, it's right on the waterfront, um, right beyond the visitor center. Um, I'll a few misgivings about that, but I mean, in terms of getting there, because it's not right on the main drag, but I'm considering some small additions, something to help bring people who are tourists along the street 
back there. At night, it's not a problem, probably because it could be lit and it could be really uh, beautiful between framed between two big palm trees right uh, by the water. So in one, some ways, it's actually even more appropriate because it's right there. That gateway literally frames the bay. Um, so that was really helpful. Um, on the second site, it was really helpful to have the water quality, water waste uh, storm runoff fellow named Tony Manello there. I'm following up with him. I just left his office, and he's given me two people to speak to. Shannon Brewer and Tony, to, Officer Tony Boone. So we're going to get more. He actually had a great suggestion because I brought him a sketch based on my measurements. They actually probably could have one there. They've got a digitized streetscape. They'll be able to do exactly right down to the millimeter, or whatever that site triangle um, in terms of visibility. So we'll we're on the path of solving that. Um, uh, that day was also helpful that I got to spend some time with um, David Archie over at CAP because I wanted to kind of acclimate them to what was going on. They've been seeing me around the site for a long time, in and out, the staff there. I wanted to tell him about, just begin the conversation about the opportunity that there is to have this artwork out there and maybe use it as an educational thing for youth and community. And also about that security camera, we, we, we discussed that. So we can get into that later, but we did discuss that. Um, I was able to make three visits to the Historical Society, one with the archivist, all of them were really helpful in different ways. Um, setting up to do more with the archivist because what's happening is like I've got a, more than I expected in, of history that I've been digesting and it's been really interesting, exciting, and it's gonna help me target like requests for certain things as I kind of make a narrative out of the visual pieces. Um, so um, let's see. So I've been exploring the city in that light by foot, bicycle, and driving. <laughs> And uh, I also met with Carolyn Lanford, the principal planner, because I got wind of that grant. You were the one who sent that to me. Then I looked at it online, and I just wanted to basically say, you know, to her, this seems like it's in this arena of what you're doing, so let's just, maybe there's something that can benefit what you're doing. She told me more about it, but then came, she gave me some great images, and she dumped like 70 articles or so on me <laughs> from 1890s or 1880s all the way to, 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 to early 2000s, mm -hmm. which took me a day and a half to read all of them, but really fascinating stuff about uh, the African-American community, a lot of the dynamics, a lot of the historical events, and some of them really, really are even really helpful. Like, for instance, I found an image of Annie Dabbs on the, the Union Academy had their first ever um, reunion in the history Mm -hmm. And I got a picture of her holding up the old her class picture from. So it's like that is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm finding out more details about what was here. Like there was a, a Black Oddfellows Hall. That's going to be a specific quest to see if I can find it from mm -hmm. uh, from the Archivist at Historical Society. And there was also like a Better Boys Club. But I found out in my research that that was actually in the Union Academy School. So I'm solving some of the prop the issues as I'm going along. Um, what else is there? It's a specific quest. Yeah, so all of that, uh, all of this information is put percolating, and it's going to help me uh, make that visual narrative even better than I had imagined initially. I think it's going to really seep in and have significance to people, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so that's gonna, that's exciting. Uh, meanwhile, I'm also making some material purchases and things to gear up for the construction, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and just um, checking on the timing and the cost of the materials. So... That's in the way. So this next month or so is going to be like heavily on the visual narrative and just getting set up to do all the production. There's going to be a lot of drilling holes in steel, for instance. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's about it. I don't know if there's any questions or not. Uh, uh, not a question, yeah. but a comment. It almost sounds like you've got the makings of a nice history book there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, the... Um, what happens is the more, you probably know this, the more you get involved in this, the more, the more you study it, the more it starts synchronizing with other th larger pictures in the, in all scales. So it's really exciting. I mean, here's another example. I think I might have mentioned to you when I first, uh, after I submitted this, I went to my cousin's house and I told him about Tarm's Rings and I had no idea he had relatives here, ancestors. And then I found out that his answers to had a 13-room boarding house right in the center of Tarm Springs. Well, one of the articles was literally about like the, based on the description, the, they were going to tear these buildings down. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I can't, like, it's like a bullseye. So um, I'm going to see if I can find images of that. But it's that, that's kind of precision on some levels. It's 
so it's kind of it's kind of fun. There's more too. I won't even get into all of it yet, but that's right. Yeah, so it's fun. Mm -hmm. Graham. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, first is I'm not entirely clear where the new location is. Um, okay. <laughs> it's probably a failing of my imagination rather than your description. I can help you. Uh, so when you're on uh, Dodecanese and you come up to that um, welcome center uh, sign and then the building is right there behind that like park layer parking, mm -hmm. just to the left of that is like a, an area I put for mar reserve marina parking and there's a gate kind of a black fence that a rolls across gate. there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that parking lot goes all the way back to the waterfront. Yeah. And uh, at the end, as I think it was Tony or Brandon pointed out, those end parking spaces are kind of not really parking spaces. So he said, you could put this thing here. So that's a great idea. Uh, so enable, basically, once you go to the, if you're facing the um, visitor center, you go right to the left, past their entrance on the side. You look straight down, there's a clear view to the end, to the waterfront, framed by two big potted palm trees, which is going to really help, actually. Joan made a comment about perhaps putting some benches down there. So that's something yeah, we can definitely. explore, they, too. Yeah, Tony, Tony mentioned something about yeah. you know, putting some a couple of benches down there so people can sit and look at the water and the sculpture. Yeah. And so it's actually, um, you know, when you think about the, the avenue, there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I've been looking at all aspects, including how, I mean, it's like, how do you actually fit anything there? But to get those illuminated art boxes in, it's almost like there was... <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going on, so to just to be visually catch people's attention. And mm -hmm. then, of course, one of the issues with the sighting initially was they were afraid of visual distraction, whatever that means. But um, Well, it's also like, it was the, the idea of uh, there's a bus stop there, and they yeah. thought that it, it was just too busy. Yeah. There would be yeah. too much congestion. It's right at the start yeah. of the docks. Yeah. So if people are even driving past and they stop to look at it, it's mm -hmm. it's going to yeah. you know create like bottlenecks. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I yeah. think uh, we we all figured out that it was uh, a much better site. So um, yeah, um, that may happen anyway, all along, especially for new people who come along. But mm -hmm. I understand it, and the uh, way I'm thinking about compensating is maybe trying to find do something maybe smaller there, because it is a rare where people right get off the trolley and where pedestrians and newcomers and people that, you know would right. maybe see. So maybe there's a way that we can tease them in. Because the, the big thing, I think my biggest thing about this is I just want to make sure that the first sculpture, which is in the most visible high profile area, mm -hmm. could lead you to the second one. Right, <laughs> That right. was really the main issue. So I'm going to try to figure out how to do that anyway. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If you, okay, it'd be like right here. Mm -hmm. Across the end there? Yeah. Right there. Okay. So it's like a little, it's like a little parking lot, so it would be right there. You can almost see the, the palm trees. Yeah, I can see the palm trees there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was just when you said behind the rolling gate, you know, I was yeah. like, I was like, so it's totally inaccessible? No, it's well, no, there is a little bit of a, like, when I go there as a newbie and I look at that gate, I'm thinking, oh, is, should I be able to go back down there? It is mostly open, or, so, but... Oh, no, you know, I don't think I've ever seen it closed. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think, I don't think I've seen it closed either. Right. But I caught a little bit of feeling, like, maybe, but I think this I think I'll may help to, and there probably could be other things to be done. I know it actually noticed that... When you go into that historical society, you go on one way, but there's no ramp to go down the other way. <laughs> there's no <laughs> stairs, even like a little couple steps. Right. Just to like let people off would be, if you were making improvements there, would be not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Well, you mentioned something, and you know, I don't know if we could pull it off, but um, there's that acrylic dolphin mm -hmm. out in front of the information center, yes. and you mentioned something about putting like an illuminated conch shell or something I there. Was, yeah, it was one of the, my brainstorming and, and kind of um, uh, on the move. I was the the conch shell, of course, is it's a, a universal sea, but also it connects directly with this culture because they that's what there was a symbol of that the Bahamian community particularly. So I was thinking, hmm, maybe there's a way to help pull people in there without like you know. You have a di even though it's a great site, it's it's a distance back from where right. it was. So, mm -hmm. so I'm thinking about that. Okay, Graham, do you have any other? Um, yeah, only don't throw the research materials away. Oh no, if you don't want to write. <laughs> even if you don't want to write the book, I'm sure we can find somebody who does. <laughs> yeah, they say you get the you get a sense of all the people who have been involved over the years when you're doing this, and you realize how it's impossible out the cumulative. Yeah. That's one of the interesting things too. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Biba, any comments, questions? 
No, Nick? If y'all do oh. go back and look at the site again at some point, I, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. Okay. Along. Nick? Yeah, um, I was going to ask what Graham had. I wasn't real clear on the location hmm? at first. And yeah, probably after I leave the meeting. You drive by there and I'm see I'm going to go it's down there and drive by. And <laughs> You'll miss it if you attention. drive by. Yeah, right. Well, I'll go park then. <laughs> Diane, yeah. I can, I can yeah, email you a, a photo. Mm -hmm. of, of the site. Oh, yeah, you oh, took me a picture of me right in front of it, I right. think, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, is this yeah. going to be a series of, of sculpture? I'm, I'm... Actually, two. Okay. Uh, so one of them is located there, and welcome to the board, by the way. Uh, <laughs> one of them is located there on Sponge Dock. The other one is a Union Academy neighborhood, okay. which is in the corner of Gross and I'm Martin right. Luther King Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, 1.6 miles. Um, okay, so it's going to be one uh, a sculpture. I was just wondering... I mean, I'll go by and look. As yeah. far as bringing the artwork out towards the street more, um, like in front of the, uh, uh, instead of back in that parking lot, up in front of, when you go by, in, in front of the uh, the uh, Harbor Master's office yeah. and, and that stuff, where you see lit palm trees, then they're all lit up at night right on the thing there, uh, like a little island of palm trees with Christmas lights on them. Right. I mean, I'm just... Well, that's where that's where he was originally going to put it on that little island. Yeah. But the the thing is, I I've been I was in a meeting with uh, you know Mayor Vaticiotis and Mark Lacoris, the city manager, and Paul Smith, and they were concerned about putting it there because, as I said, people would be piling up because it's a trolley stop. You know, if oh, people okay. get off and they're because mm -hmm. that that little island is not that big. Right, right. And and there's parking right there. So yeah, you've got yeah. you've got dodecanese, you've and got a small signage, sidewalk. And there's business signage, business signage below uh, behind it as I was we was right. pointing out to us too. Right. And you've got yeah. a fairly narrow sidewalk, then you've got the strip with the sculpture and right. then you've got parking. Right, right. So there's just a little it's Tight. just a little too much going on. So that's why we decided to give it a little more um, room around it. Yeah, a little more spacious. Plus, as you know, Stephen said it's actually on the river. So I think, sure, sure. you know, we're making that connection back yeah, to the river. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. As long as we can, you know, make it inviting for people mm -hmm. to. Yeah, I think it will be, over. especially illuminated. This, yeah. This is be. an issue with the um, with the pelican um, bench and sculpture as well. Is is getting people who are walking on the street on on Dodecanese to understand that there are things closer to the water that they need mm -hmm. to go to. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I've been thinking about that. I don't have a good solution. Okay. Go on. <laughs> you have any? Uh, no, it sounds very exciting, though. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to do some more research on locations and stuff so I can get a, a visual picture, but I'm mm -hmm. really excited to see how it goes forward. Also, um, I, I agree we should save these materials and maybe think about doing a, a further project that... Um, if it's not a book, maybe um, mm -hmm. uh, you know some something online that people could look at, and we could have a, a sign with a QR code or something, and right. let everybody uh, enjoy that mm -hmm. the rich history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. excellent. Okay, <laughs> that actually would be sorry, a great idea to have a, a component, you know, that at the at your site. I, I really love the idea of having a QR code and then having a site that connects to it to give more information because mm -hmm. it just can so that people can dig deeper into mm -hmm. all of yeah. those things. I think that's a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, it, it's a it's an interesting balance this project because there's a lot of visual information that's getting in mm -hmm. uh, uh, distilled into it or baked into it. Mm -hmm. um, but as an art piece, you're not trying to be as didactic as a museum display and all that other right. stuff. You know, it's a kind of, it's right. a kind of, it's so it's probably appropriate to have something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not hard to do either, as they have all the stuff. Just make the annotations and yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there a city policy on QR codes on city projects or? No. no? Okay. Excellent. Okay. Okay, mm. Stephen. Thank you. You're welcome. That it's might be one thing that, that might be one of our solutions to the as people come in. You know, they could look at the code and bam. Oh, right. wow, really? All that? <laughs> when huh. it, it's actually the opposite because the idea from a physical standpoint is to get something visually beautiful mm -hmm. to draw people in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But that's another wow. approach, yeah. So I'll, I'm mm -hmm. going to think about that too. Yeah, yeah. Get, get people mm -hmm. interested with the beauty of the piece and then let them dive in deeper And they could go uh, later the other, again, maybe they go the other way too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a, another good way to bounce people back and forth between the two pieces. Great, yeah. thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Okay, um... Okay, uh, let's see, the Riverside Field Mural Project. 
And I, I think in your handouts you have a picture of the revised design. And I remember at the last meeting we suggested to her that she change the black to brown. I think mm -hmm. it's made a big difference. It did. Okay. So the next step is um, her uh, materials. There's a page here with her materials estimate, which is 380. So that's, I think, very reasonable. So um, I'd like to entertain a motion to um, accept the uh, Priso uh, design for the uh, buildings as submitted. So moved. Okay. Can I get a second? I'll second. Okay. Is there any discussion, comments? Um, yeah, I said I missed the last couple of episodes. Um. <laughs> Can I just ask a few questions? Sure. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't there. You're okay. Be beaten. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So this was because we had. Did we entertain the? Uh, I mean, I saw a few things come through on the email, but so hers is basically one proposal for the two sides. How did we break that up again? Yeah. It's um, well. The colors are the same, but if you've noticed, right? So uh, I get the soccer and the right thing. the soccer right. right. Okay, okay, so, okay, good girl. All right, so so the thing is that when she submitted it for the last meeting, everything that you see is brown was black. Yeah, I saw that it was a little... Right, and little, uh, I, I know Robert Stackhouse especially was, you know, uh, strongly suggesting that she change the color scheme. Mm -hmm. So she did, and um, I think it's it plays better. much better. And it's better. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, is that so the two sides was one thing for the thousand dollars, and right. then, so now we still have the other two sides to to deal with, or we're not going to do the other two sides. Diane, I think this was the whole building, right? Oh. Yeah, the whole building. Oh, okay. Because I thought there was. Yeah. No, she's only going to do two sides, isn't she? Yeah. 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 Okay. And this is it. We're not going to do any oh, more. We're not going to do the. No. Okay. okay. That's what I'm asking. At present. Yeah. If you saw the uh, uh, the building at Sisler Field. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. it's kind of the same idea. And, um, you know, if, if something looks unfinished, like what we did with Sister Field, is we just picked up one of the colors and just painted one of the walls a solid. Sure. I mean... You drive by Sister Field after the meeting as yeah. well. Right. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that. Okay, okay. all right. You're that's all negligent. <laughs> it's going to be beaten, all of you. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, um, all right, so um, all yes. in favor of the project? Aye. 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 Any... Aye. any uh, any nays? Okay. Nay. You don't want it? No, I was, you asked if there were any nays. And okay. I was saying nay. Okay. Nice guy. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Also in your handouts is the signage for Pete the Pelican. Okay. Okay. Uh, Joy Giorgio Sackelson won the naming contest, and I asked her to send me a little, you know, snippet of her rationale for, for naming it. And uh, that's what's on the signage. And I think it, you know, one of the criticisms about it is that it's whimsical and so on and so forth. But I think this kind of goes a long way to tying it back to the community. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I added this, the paragraph on the bottom. Um, okay, and uh, so uh, it's all ready to be installed, right, Diane? I believe it is. It is installed? I, I have not been back by there yet, okay. but I did put in the work request. To get oh, it okay. Installed. All right. So uh, the next thing we have to do is a uh, press release and photo op with, with Joy and the mayor. And I guess any of us who would like to uh, also mm -hmm. attend. Um, Diane, I guess we can just, I don't think we have to do it now. We'll just run some dates by her. Yeah, because we have to run everything, especially by the mayor and mm -hmm. everybody okay. else. Okay. So, I, Diane, a very nice job with the sign. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Looks good. Okay, and the other part of the handout is the, um, you know, a brief update from Elizabeth about the film. Okay, and we have a new roster. So, Dawn, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> okay, um, the Safford Gateway project is on hold. Um, Christopher, the Glenner Goodacre bench. Well, I thought 
thought we had spoken that we'll try and find somebody in the city to go ahead and uh, right and, and see if they can do the uh, touch up, you know, and, and repair and maintain it uh, as opposed to trying to replace it at this time. Right, uh, Diane, I believe you have an update on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, did talk to the Public Works and they will um, go ahead and and have somebody go out and uh, maintain it for us. I asked them to do it now and then to, you know, just uh, we'd let them know, but I was told them roughly maybe every six months. Yeah. Well, once they do it, we can just keep an eye on it and see how it does, right. you know, how yeah. does it Might wear. Might even be longer, you know, yeah. Once we see it, you know, right. it could be a, yeah. from scratch, you know, let's see how long it takes to deteriorate and, right. Yeah. Right. and what it looks like. Right. Just to give credit where credit is due, Eddie Mullally, who owns the Neptune Cyclery on the bike trail, indicated that, you know, he would be willing to take a look at it. But, you know, I think it's it's great that the Public Works Department is taking it on. So, yeah. you know, keep keep it for the city. Um, Megan, the budget update and developer contributions. Yes. Okay. So, um, we just had some revenue interest. So our balance current is one hundred eighty-five thousand three hundred and sixty-nine dollars um, then next month that's gonna have <coughs> taken out the art box um, installation payment or the yeah, creation the panels the panels, the panels yeah, creation the panels. Right. as well as the art box artists um, payments will all be taken care of um, so that'll be a little bit different um, next month right and I guess we'll be paying for uh, the Prusa project too as well, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, and then we do have a couple updates. Um, we will be getting our public art fee for Flagship Bank uh -huh. is $7,681.36. Great. And then Pat McNeese let me know that they've just signed off on a North Lake Estates development. Um, when the permit is issued, they will do a public art fee of $13,500. Great. And the North Lakes Estate Development is a 44-unit single-family subdivision located up between North Highland and East Lake Drive. Okay, great. All right, so we've got some, some credible income coming in. Excellent. Okay, so we have Mr. Oliver to pay off. <laughs> Okay, the CRA mural project. Um, Dawn, you're probably not familiar with this, but the CRA, it's the Community Redevelopment Agency. Okay. Okay, and it's a geographically defined area in the city that has, a, is this accurate, Diane? They have like a separate funding, you yes. know, uh, budget and everything like that. Okay. And um, the Board of Commissioners uh, passed um, a resolution saying that if anybody wants to do a mural on their business, they would contribute up to, I think it's $1,500. It's a, uh, it's a match. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's on, the, on the agenda as kind of a rolling thing, but to date we haven't had anybody put an application in. Hmm. Okay. So uh, I have a feeling that, you know, there, there might be some things in the works, but nobody's actually filled out a form and put it in. And how was the how was that disseminated as far as on the website or how? Yeah, it's on the city website. Uh, there was some publicity when it was first done, and uh, you know, it's um, as I said, it's one of the few things that uh, gets funded on, um, uh, you know, from from uh, on private property. Right. But the thing is, it doesn't come out of our budget, but we have to approve the artwork. Okay. So somebody has to come up with something, you know. Okay. You know, something's really did you we know, put, inappropriate. Did, did we put anything on, um, like, Turpin Springs happening or anything like that? Oh, it's been out there for a while. Maybe okay. we can... Here, Lemons is in charge of the that uh, CRA. Uh, okay. Uh, so... so Question. Ask her to put it out again. Right. Biba? Um, have particular businesses been approached? Like, have we, you know, kind of maybe done a, a visual, you know, uh, drive by of what businesses have walls that might be a great place and actually approach them to say, hey, have you thought about this? 
Like it might be an Make them aware. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think a personal, you know, something more personal. Right. And um, is mm -hmm. usually gets people you right. know, more interested than expecting them to see something on a random website that they never go to. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've always felt it was one of my personal challenges to make people aware of things. Yes. It's not it's, easy. It is always <laughs> a, ta a challenge. My um, husband used to refer to it as partial awareness. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I really think, you know, if we could come back with, you know, even if we're just driving around, I mean, it's not that we don't have that big of a town. As we're driving, if we notice a wall that's, that might say, hey, you know, mm -hmm. that well, might. There, there are two terrific examples on um, West Topham Avenue, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the, the, I don't even remember the Changing names of the tides, buildings. Uh, is yeah. there. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Chris Still one and the uh, and the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, what's I guess that little economic development building has has a big panoramic yeah. uh, photograph. Yeah, of that the, that one. And, right. and the, it, that's the one actually on the, one you could use to show people as an yeah. example. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we wanted to put a packet together of just those, like a picture of those things, and maybe some at names of. A couple of businesses that would be prime for that kind of thing. I wouldn't mind going and knocking on a door and mm -hmm. say, "Hey." Yeah, Karen probably does have the packet. I'll ask okay. her to uh, send yeah, it to you all. Yeah, she's yeah head of economic development, so you might want to contact her and then. Okay. You know, why reinvent the wheel if it's already done? Right. right. That's but, true. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dawn. And I also think you know if there's so few of them, and I think there's probably only so many walls that that would work on. Mm -hmm. Right. That why do we not consider maybe instead of having the business owner pay maybe you know our out of our budget or something or the city's budget maybe we completely fund it to make it easier for people to do we're beautifying our city it's not you know it might be hard for some of those businesses to shell out that money well the the thing is it's um, by having having the, the concept of a match is like you know having the property owner have some skin in the game right and it's the pro it's the property owner that has to put in the request not the business owner Right. No, I get right. it. So, I get it. Um, but you know, if you want to go back, I, you know, and look at what the discussion was before the board of commissioners, where they where they set this up, that might give you some insights into mm -hmm. you know what their rationale was for setting it up the way it was. Right. And and I mean, and I get all those rationales, and I kind of seen them a little bit, but you know, I'm just thinking that, and right now it's kind of difficult for people to. For a lot of these small businesses to shell out even fifteen two hundred two hundred two thousand dollars, you know, if there's only you know two walls that would work, is it really that hard for us to, um, you know? Well, the th the thing is, when when this came before the board of commissioners, I took it upon myself to call some local mm -hmm. um, muralists, mm -hmm. and for the most part, they're charging between five and seven hundred dollars. Oh, that's it. Yeah. So I mean. So you're talking about coming up with, you know, two fifty to three fifty. Oh, I, I thought I, w I assumed it would be much higher. Yeah, no, it's you know, and to do it on a you know on private property, right? You know, and you know one of our our things lately, in fact, uh, that's going to be the next topic, um, is that we're really uh, trying to, you know, do projects on public property, mm. and and you know because there's there's all kinds of. I call it the L word, liability. Right. So, you know, I mean, we had a very good project in the works when I first came on this committee, um, and it was called the Artist Alley. And, you know, it was pretty much pretty far along. And uh, Jules Eichmeyer and Rod Merton had actually gone, you know, the little, it's like a little alley that goes from Hibiscus to the bike trail. You know, it comes out like right between uh, Tarpon Tavern and uh, the Bistro. Yeah. Yeah. And they had approached all of the biz building owners back there and had gotten permission to put murals back there. We were going to put solar powered lighting back there. So it would be a place where people could, you know, go to the restaurants, have a drink, stroll back there and look at all the artwork. It would, yeah. you know, really liven up that whole thing. And it basically got shot down because of liability concerns. So um, I'm sure Diane will vouch for me. I mean, we went, we jumped through all kinds of hoops trying to find a, you know, a workaround. In fact, the um, this mural project, um, you know, uh, Mark Lacoris found out that if someone is paid a thousand dollars or less, they're considered a limited subcontractor, and they're automatically 
included in the city's liability insurance. So that's why we have the $1,000 benchmark. Gotcha. So, um, you know, we... We've, we've gone through, as I said, we jumped through a lot of hoops to get to where we are. But, you know, I appreciate you asking the question because you guys are new and I've been, yeah. you know, especially Diane and I have been slogging through this for years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, okay. uh, you know, it's just, it's just very, very difficult, you know. And uh, I think what's important and from what Joan is saying, too, is that you know, one of the things we learned over the years is that, you know, we can all come up with some really good ideas and everything, but the, the whole, in, instead of moving forward, you know, quickly, it's best to kind of vet it out, you know, really well ahead of time, find out what the, you know, some of the challenges are going to be, you know, and then mm -hmm. see what, if it's viable to overcome them or not, you know. So okay. we learned that with, you know, the the water project too yeah I mean, that's you know. the uh, um, yeah the Safford gateway project right you know Lucienne had done yeah. a lot of work on that and it's it's like these things just pounce at you out of the bushes you know all of a sudden you think you've got this great project <laughs> going and you know she was even connected to two landscape architects to get some ideas about you know creating you know something that was appropriate for the site and you know, whammo, you know, just can't do it, you know, for one reason or another. That's a shame. So, um, you know, I had a crazy idea many years ago to do a um, holographic Christmas parade down Dodecanes. And I actually have even found a company from Canada that would do it. Hmm. And he came down and, well, he did some Google Earth searches. Yeah. And we couldn't do it because our infrastructure isn't tall enough. <laughs> you need, you know, like at least four-story buildings for the projection cameras. Oh. But that would have been so cool, yeah. you know, to have these creatures, you know, fly down <laughs> the street. Yeah. Yes, Stephen? You're, um, you're actually reminding me of my conversation with Carolyn Lanford. I always say that, like, that it can only be to the benefit for some of these ideas to sort of synchronize with the planning. It's exciting because you can see where the, up, like, when you, it piqued my attention when you said hibiscus. Because I've been looking at all of these streets and, and mm -hmm. what might have been there, and there's such a rich potential of connecting, making, uh, I think I call it overlay of these. So it's like a matrix, these different things. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's a good coordinating with planning can be really good on a couple levels. Right. Well, there was a time when Hibiscus was actually closed off, and a lot of the little restaurants, it was like being in, in Europe. All these this, these little sidewalks, cafes that were actually out on the cobblestones. It was so charming. Yeah. During COVID. Yeah. Right. It was during COVID because people, you know, could, yeah. you know, uh, keep their distance. But it created a problem for the cathedral. So it's like dominoes. You know, you've got, you know, one thing impacts another. And, you know, because I know all the, the restaurant owners and even the, the people just loved it. But, you know, just wasn't doable. So, anyway, it sounds like my life. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, all right, ordinance review. Okay, um, I went before the TRC, Technical Review Committee, and with the uh, changes we made to the Public Art Committee ordinance, and they made some minor wording tweaks and it's, I just spoke to Mark this morning. It's coming before the uh, Board of Commissioners for approval on January 10th. So if you would all like to uh, it, attend. And you're going to the TRC meeting that's coming up, right? There's another one. No, I didn't know about that one. Okay. Yeah, there is. Okay. I didn't know I had to go back. Okay. Yeah, I think you're the representative for the Public Art Committee, so I think you're actually need to go most, I don't know. So tomorrow? Was, no. Yesterday. It was yesterday? <laughs> I'll check on it. I'll get it the, to you. There isn't another one this year, is there? I th yeah, there is. They just talked about it in my staff meeting today, so. Oh. Like, uh, hmm. I think well, let me know. It's, it might be on the 19th, but uh, I'll check on it for you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, Dawn, I hate to give you a lot of homework, but, uh, <laughs> you know, if you haven't already, you should go through the ordinance, the public art ordinance. Okay. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to, as I said, uh, 
The city of Tarpon Springs has its own YouTube channel, yeah. and these are all recorded and archived. So okay. you get a little more of a grasp of, you know, what we've got going on here. Gotcha. Okay. Um, city of Tarpon Springs sponge boat and the sponge exchange boat. Diane? Um, that, uh, that Nick brought up at one of our previous meetings, um, I asked uh, them about it, and uh, it was actually brought up at a... a former BOC meeting for funding. I think I sent that email out to everybody. Did mm -hmm. anybody attend yeah, that I, meeting? I went to uh, the first uh, board meeting after we met last month. I attended. Um, I got there a half hour early. I had thought it started at 6. First time I've been early for anything. <laughs> and all, but I did see, uh, you know, sitting in there, then the, uh, the mayor and city manager both uh, arrived same time so I went down there and, mm. and spoke with them and they you know should I they said it was on the uh, consent agenda mm -hmm. you know and uh, since I didn't really have to hang around and they told me that um, you know that it, the boat would be hauled it hasn't been hauled out yet mm -hmm. but they'd already made arrangements you know uh, with the boat yard to come take it and mm -hmm. haul it out when the way's cleared and you know if I would if I would go by and uh, keep an eye on you know just to mm -hmm. to to see how it was going there. Oh, that's great. Although I suspect it's going to be in good hands. You know, uh, uh, Gulf Marine Ways, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Wally Erickson is the gentleman uh, who's there, a very old timer who uh, mm -hmm. uh, built a lot of boats and, and knows a lot about it and stuff. So, you know, although I I would like to go just to uh, just to go <laughs> just to go because it's, I grew up around underneath the sponge boats watching the old timers you know, haul them out and work on them and stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah that, I'd that's, be happy to go take That a kind look. of knowledge is just priceless. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and we're losing it and also. So, yeah, so I think it, it was already handled, you know, that the city was aware and made arrangements to have it hauled right. and stuff. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, Kyle Pierce Sculpture, that's, that's mine. Um, a couple of years ago... Um, Kyle Pierce came to, he's a local uh, metalwork artist, uh, came to a um, meeting of the Board of Commissioners, and we had actually arranged for him to do a series of pelicans right where the Mike Elwell pelican sculpture is, and he kind of vanished. <laughs> oh. So anyway, he, he resurfaced, and I met with him, um, he is working on, did you print that out, Megan? The... I did not. What, oh, okay. what did you have? For I sent her uh, a draft of the, of the sculpture. But he's making. I see it. I cannot see that. So okay. Can... Maybe, I, maybe it's probably in my draft, so I don't know. But anyway, um, he is working on a, a chrome version of Sylvester the Cat. Oh. Okay, and old-time Tarponites remember there was a cat that was down by the two Georges who would actually jump into the enclave and come out with fish. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And I think over the years there was a succession of Sylvesters. Okay, but it is part of the, you know, the local lore, and, you know, he's got quite a history. Yeah. So... Um, so anyway, Kyle is going to, he's already working on it. He was hoping to have it finished by the meeting, but it's going to be finished next week. So he's working on this chrome version of Sylvester the Cat, and um, uh, the price for the sculpture is 2500 And, you know, he would install it and create a, you know, a base for it. So um, let's see if I can find that. It's still kind of in. Where would that be going again? Um, down by the, um, uh, like where the two Georges are, like right where the, uh, the, the, the pelican, pelican and the is. bench is. Oh. Okay. Okay. Where's... Oh, wait. It's in my, I think it's in my photos. Okay. It's in, it's really rough, but if you want to pass it around, it's missing its head and its tail and its legs. Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's a sorry cat that. I, I yes, it's a cat, cat body. Cat? It's a, it's a real dox cat. Let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where's the cat? 
Well, the, well, the head's not there. Right. It's missing its appendages. <laughs> you know, hind legs and stuff. And, and front legs. It's I mean, basically it's just his torso and front legs. It's a, so it's a, a cat torso. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, it'll be a bona fide mm. cat by the time he's um, finished. It's, it's a shiny blob, yes. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, he, he works, he recycles. How big um, is it? I think it's about yay. Yeah. He works with uh, recycle, recycled automobile parts, like chrome bumpers and oh, nice. things of that sort. Is it going to have a fish? In his mouth. Awesome. Yeah. Will there be the story of Sylvester? Of course there'll be the story of Sylvester. Okay. <laughs> so it's not it's just a, some random... Not, not just some random cat like the one I own <laughs> that came off the docks. Right. I, so um, I'd like a um, motion to approve the acquisition of Sylvester the cat from Kyle Pierce for $2,500. And where is it going to be installed? <laughs> Down. I know you said near, but where? Are you familiar with that whole tract? I am, yes. Okay. Well, that's where the cat used to hang out, so that's yes. where we're going to put him, down by, right by the water by the pelican and the bench. Okay. So he'll be like a companion to the pelican because they were both fisher creatures down there. Gotcha. So he'll be sort hung of out near the behind, tables. closer to the railing. Mm. No, Maybe. probably just like right along the bench. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's visible. Not yet. Oh yeah, no, he'll be yeah. visible. Yeah. Okay. And he'll probably he'll probably have his own sign or maybe a QR code or something. Or both. Or both. Yes. <laughs> so do I have a, a motion to approve? Can I do that? Yes, you can vote today. I motion to approve. Okay. Second. I'll second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Unanimous. We're getting a Sylvester the cat. Okay. Um, I also, this is not on the agenda, but um, Trish Gregory, who's the president of the uh, Tarpon Springs Art Association, wanted to know if we would sponsor, there's a couple of copies of this, um, their uh, paint and photo. Thanks. Okay. They put out a pretty extensive uh, brochure for this. And if you look at the sheet, there were various, yeah. Uh, sponsorship levels. So um, I guess the first question is, A, whether we want to sponsor it, and B, if we do, at what financial level? Are we permitted under the ordinance to sponsor events like that? I yes, because we have in the past. We haven't done it for quite a few years. I'd say maybe like five or six years. You have to check on it. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, we had COVID intervening oh. and and what level of sponsorship is she looking at? Well, you can look at the, the second sheet. That's it's not for an oh, ad in the book, page. right? Right, it's for, it's for an ad in, the, in their uh, brochure. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, it would be fun, I think, to do and just an ad. what would we want to do with the ad? Would we want to advertise some of our public artworks, or yep. do we want to canvas for mem new members because we're missing? One. Um, well, the thing is, I was thinking, I was thinking of uh, maybe putting uh, a couple of flyers around, you know, like in the art galleries, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, see if we could get, you know, attract more people to apply. Mm -hmm. So we could do that anyway. Yes. Yes. But I, I think it would be nice for this, because I, I seem to recall what we did the last time was, uh, we did a full page that had our logo and you know, the various projects that, you know, we have in, in town. Mm -hmm. I think that would be great. I'm okay with that. You're okay with it? Yeah, I think I don't we can probably be afford a, a couple of hundred dollars. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think so, good to support stuff. Yeah. And these are all local mm -hmm. artists, so. Yeah. Okay, so uh, can I have a motion? I'll motion. Okay, Viva? Full whole page. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Since, excuse me, um, since Dawn is a, a graphics artist, maybe she would be a good would, person to do the ad. I would love to. You've been volunteered. <laughs> Congratulations. I would, I would absolutely your love first, to. I was your first, going to, first volunteer job. <laughs> You'll find that happens a lot on this committee. Yeah. <laughs> I Ask had a, Graham. <laughs> I, had a, I had a boss once that called it, you're voluntold. Yeah, that's, there you go. <laughs> yes. Okay, no, so... Uh, was there a second on Biba's motion to take out a full page, Ed? So yeah. can we 
Um, can we give Dawn permission to talk to other committee members about what might be in that ad, or is she just on her own to come up with the... For discussion during the meeting. We have to discuss that during the meeting, so that would be during this meeting. Otherwise, we wouldn't have time for her to do it. Well, your, your January meeting is the 11th, and I believe the deadline for that is on the um, list there. Uh, well, Diane, maybe, maybe January we could... 23rd. January 23rd. So yeah. you have time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, maybe... If, if that's not too short a time no, frame No, that's you not to too something. short a time. Um, you know... Uh, it's a little book. It's not big. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's you know, the traditional, right. you know, five and a half by... Yeah. Oh, it's a small. Yeah. yeah. Mean, yeah. Meanwhile, have you? Um, yeah, the bond um, paper. Have you looked at the Tarpon and Arts web yeah. public art website? I have. I've yeah. perused it a little bit, but um, I'll look yeah, at it in of, depth. There's a lot of good ideas yeah. on um, there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I could do is I could come up with a, a few layout yeah. ideas for the next meeting, for the January meeting, mm -hmm. and then we can talk about changes right. or additions or whatever. Does that yeah. work? Oh, there's right. a plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I have uh, a lot of images. Awesome. Okay, so okay. Uh, if you just maybe confer with Diane and she'll let me know. Although this is informational, isn't it? Um, We've already voted on it. But you voted on it, so. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, is that you could get the ad dimensions from that person on there. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, the, it's, it's just five like and it's a like a five by seven kind of book. Yeah, if it's yeah. if it's smallish, then we probably want to go with one really strong picture and then some right. some wording about look what's happening or something like that. You know, I don't Sounds think good. it has to be anything too major and maybe a QR code to our website. There you yeah. go. People to look around. I think that would yeah. be the best. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if it's black and white or full color, so I have to check on that. I know they <laughs> do the cover in color, but I'm I think inside might be I black and white. Yeah, I think it. Uh, um, yeah. If you wanted to put a QR code for the website on it. Mm -hmm. um, we need to find out if the city has a permanent license to produce QR codes or can produce QR codes for us. I don't think you need no, a license. I can, I can produce you, a QR code online yeah, for anybody free. Can yeah. Do yeah. It. You can do it for free. Oh, yeah. You can do it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Really yeah. cool looking one, too. Yeah. yeah. They okay. expire if you go through the normal websites. Oh, yeah. No, mine are for free. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Don, nowadays you can probably even do the QR code with the um, logo. The logo right, right in the middle. Right yeah. in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, okay. round, square, book shaped, you know, they've got okay. them all out there. The only issue that we've talked about in the past for the Public Art Committee was when we were talking about putting like a sticker on, we were talking about stick, putting a sticker on the um, actual poles for the illuminated art boxes, and then it came up, you know, the, the issue that you know, people can modify something like that, you know, kind of thing. So you have to be really careful what you put it on. So I think, yeah. we, we, you know, we really did solve the problem by putting the number on it and then the right. corresponding catalog with the numbers. That will help tremendously yeah. moving forward. Mm -hmm. But and, and um, the you, QR codes, as long as it's printed on something that right. can't be manipulated, right. they're, sta they're safe. Right. Well, right. and what you can, you know, essentially how they work it's just you know the computer's reading it so people can scratch dots or or whatever out so it won't work but i've never heard of anybody like manipulating it to go somewhere else mm -hmm. right. um they just make it they render it unusable right. um but yeah if it's printed in a book like this i think we're safe mm -hmm. yeah okay so i guess we have to get them to invoice us and we, we could cut a check yeah i think mm -hmm. that'll okay. be fine and we're not interested in doing a well that's five hundred dollars never mind <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Okay. Right. I will reach out to them to get dimensions and stuff. Okay. And have uh, so my homework is to have um, three or four layouts for the next meeting. I got the, okay. this, as a newbie, you got the most homework. <laughs> <laughs> Really, Biba? <laughs> we have to think of something new. Oh, After 50, please. please. <laughs> I can't do any more. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll do one that's really horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'll make the one I love really look really good so everybody picks it. Right, okay. <laughs> okay, so we are down to staff committee and public comments and announcements. Diane, you have anything for us? Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year. Yes. <laughs> Megan? Christmas Carol is this weekend. It's sold out. Mm -hmm. Victorian Kudos, Christmas guys. was this past weekend. It was 
fabulous events. Mm -hmm. And sold out. And Victorian Christmas, the Safford House is decorated in Christmas style until at least Epiphany. Um, it, it is open Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 11 to 2.30. Um, so it's beautiful if you want to get a little of that Christmas mm -hmm. spirit. Mm -hmm. It sounds great. Unfortunately, Anson won't be there. Yes. I was yes. about to ask. Yeah. Mm. Anson's back in spirit. Mm -hmm. Did a great job, too. Yes. And again, I'd like to wish everyone Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, Happy and Healthy 2023. Graham? Yes, that would be my comment, too. Okay. Go on. <laughs> Ditto. Plus, I'm really excited to be here and to get into the new year and all the new projects that are going on. I'm super jazzed to be here. Yeah, you've so already thank started you. fitting in, much to your mm -hmm. horror. <laughs> yes. Diva, just, you know, happy holidays to everybody. And, right. Don't call me till after 50. <laughs> <laughs> the pack member formerly known as Christopher. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Nick, do you have anything to say? Oh, no, everyone have a great Christmas. And I uh, look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, if not before that, we usually run into each other right. all right. the time. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is not exactly big town. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next regular meeting is Wednesday, January 11th, in the same room at 2 p.m. And we are going to have elections for the uh, committee chair. So if anybody wants to take over from me. After sure, Anthony. <laughs> Chair, um, co uh, chair and co-chair. Yeah, chair and co-chair. Okay, it is 2.56 and this meeting is adjourned.